Turn with me, please, to the book of St. John, chapter number one. Again, I want to thank you for being here. If you're visiting with us, we'd like to have a record of your visit. On the side of your bulletin, you'll find a guest registration. Please fill that out and take it to the table in the back. We have a gift for you. Michelle will be back there waiting for you. We have a gift, and we want to thank you for being here. St. John, chapter number one, we're going to begin reading in verse number one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now there was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. And this morning, as we look at the many different aspects of the story in the life of Christ. Open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds that we might receive and hear and believe. And even as John said, trust in you. Thank you for Jesus, for Christmas, for his story. In your precious name I pray, amen. All around the country today, preachers are going to begin series on Christmas. Some will begin series on a family affair. Some will begin series on uh, other things of the aspects of the life of Christ. And each Sunday, they'll preach a different uh, aspect of his life. Well, in the month of December, we're doing a little bit different. Today, we're going to talk about his story because history is all about Jesus. Amen? From beginning to the end, it's all his story. And if it's his story, we need to know it from the beginning to the end, from eternity past to eternity future. And that's what we're going to look at. Next Sunday, we're going to look at our story, which is actually your story. And I want to know next week, I trust you'll be here and enjoy the story of your salvation by grace through faith and how God has brought you to a relationship with him. The, now, so next Sunday, if you don't know for sure, my lapel is not on. Thank you. Can you all hear me anyway? Yeah, that's all right. We'll turn it back on. That's good. Because they're recording, so I have to turn it on just for recording. Is that better, Brother David? Thank you very much. And thank you all in the back for waving at me because I don't hardly ever look up there. That's good. Next Sunday, the children will be performing a musical for us. And I know, I know you'll enjoy that musical. So I trust that you'll be here to do that during the, during the morning worship. It's actually a play, a skit that they're going to be doing. Today, I want to talk about Christ because that's what it's all about. He is the very darling son of God. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man coming to the Father but by him. But we need to know more about that than, than just being able to say that. So we're going to look today at eternity past. We're going to look at his birth. We're going to look at his life, and we're going to look at his death, and we're going to look at his resurrection, and we're going to look at his coming again, because that's what it's all about. Amen? His, his before, his during, his after, his coming again, and the fact that we're going to live with him forever. There's no greater joy than to know that. Now, around Christmas season, everybody will be talking about Santa Claus and Rudolph and the reindeers and, and uh, moving their elf on the shelf all around and, and having all kind of fun. And if you, know those, if you do those things, that's awesome. That's family tradition. That's family fun. But do not forget, my friend, that Jesus is, was, and always will be the reason for the season. Keep him first in your heart. Keep him first in your mind. Keep him first 
in everything. Now, I want to begin today where Christ began. John said, in the beginning was the Word. And if you do not know, the Word there is capitalized, and that is speaking of Jesus Christ. He is in the beginning. Now, I hope you have your Bible, because we're going to read, I think I've got 26 verses in my message this morning, and I'm probably going to read all 26 of them, so I hope you have your Bible ready to go. Because remember, it's the Word of God, not my thoughts about the Word of God that make the difference. Let's try that again. It's the Word of God, not my thoughts about the Word of God that make the difference. So here we go. Let's get into the Word of God. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Go to the book of Micah, please. Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. Uh, just go to the book of Jonah and act like you're there. The book of Micah. Chapter number 5, I'll give you just a minute to get there. If you're not there, the, it'll be on the screen. Micah chapter 5, verse number 2. But thou, Ephraim, Bethlehem Ephratath, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth that is to be ruler in Israel. And note this phrase, whose goings forth have been from old and from, what's that last word? Everlasting. I want you to know, Jesus was before Christmas. Jesus came, be, Jesus was before he came in the manger. Jesus was before John spoke about him in his book. Jesus was in the beginning. John chapter 8, St. John chapter number 8. Oh, these are so good. Chapter number 8, verse number 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, what did he say? I am. In the book of John, chapter 17, verse number 5. St. John, chapter 17, verse number 5. The Bible says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me, with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee, read these words out loud, before the world was. Verse 24 of that very same chapter. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me, and read these words out loud, before the foundation of the world. I want you to know, before Christmas, before the Christmas trees, before John, before Abraham, Christ was. According to Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, He is the creator of all things, and all things exist by Him. So I want you to know, His beginning was not in the manger. His beginning was not with Mary. His beginning was not with Joseph. He was before all of that. Amen? Before the world, he was. Now, I really don't fully grab the truth and the reality in my finite mind about this, but I'll do my best to tell you. Turn to 1 John chapter number 5. 1 John chapter number 5. Before the world, before time, before history, before anything ever existed, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit stood on nothing and created everything. 1 John chapter number 5. Let's begin reading in verse number 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are what? One. I do not fully understand the Holy Trinity. But I do know that they were together 
in the book of Genesis chapter 1 when it said, In the beginning God, the word God is Elohim, and it's actually plural, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And when you read down through that portion of Scripture, you find it really neat that he said, Let us make man in our image. Now, us and our are plural. They're not singular. You know what that means? That's three in one. Now, I don't understand it completely, but then I don't understand how a brown cow can eat green grass and give white milk. But I drink it. I don't understand how trees can grow spaghetti. Oh, no, they don't, do they? On April Fool's one year, uh, a, a newscaster decided one time that he wanted to, to do an April Fool's joke, so he told all the people, he said, all the spaghetti trees in Italy are dying. And if you want spaghetti, you better go to the store and get it because in, in two years there will be no more spaghetti because all the trees are dying. And do you know that everybody ran in the store and bought all the spaghetti they had? Spaghetti don't grow on trees. I don't know how it grows, but I like it and I eat it. I don't understand how there's three in one, but I believe it. I don't understand how with me there can be a body, a soul, and a spirit. I, I can understand this body. I, I touch it. I hit it. It hurts. It's fun. It, it's, it's my body. I understand my emotions. I, I really, really do. How my emotions get me going and how I get mad and how I get glad and how I get sad and how I, I, I well, never mind. You know all those things. But uh, my spirit, when the Holy Spirit convicted my heart, something inside of me that I had no idea was there said, ooh, you need to get saved. And I said, I do what? You need to get saved. Okay, Lord, I'll do that. And that spirit came alive inside of me. And now, according to Ephesians chapter 2, I once was dead, but now I'm alive. Because I have Christ in me. So Jesus was before the manger. Jesus was before John. Jesus was before Micah. Jesus was before Abraham. Jesus was before anything. And he created all things. And by him were all things made. And without him was not anything made that was made. But if you look down through time, they decided back there in their council that they had that they were going to create a man. Somebody said he created man first, and then he created woman, and then he quit because he knew he couldn't do any better. He created man, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. But he knew that that man would stumble and would falter and would fall, and he knew that that man would sin and turn his back on him. So the son said, Dad, I'll be the sacrifice for that sin. I'll pay the price. Turn with me, please, to the book of Galatians. We know that he was before Abraham and that he was before all things. And now in the book of Galatians, the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 4 and in verse 4, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Crabba, crying, Abba, Father. The Bible says that the Creator of all things, Him which is and which was and which always shall be, Him that was before when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son. 
back in John chapter number 1, verse number 14, the Word of God says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, and the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In 1 John chapter number 4, please. 1 John chapter number 4. The Word of God tells you and I in the second verse. He says, verse number 4, verse number 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out, of, out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus is Christ is come in the, it's Christ, the Christ is come in the flesh. That is every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in in the flesh. That's how we can know because he truly is come in the flesh. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. So here we go. They're in heaven and he has the glory of the father. He's seated at the father's right hand. He's the king. He's the creator. He's taking care of everything. And the father looks at him and says, okay, son, it's time. Yes, Dad, I will go. And we just saw the story in the little clip of how Mary was with child. And I want you to understand some things about this birth that are very important. Number one, it was a virgin birth. Let me say that again. Mary knew no man. You know what the Bible says? Made of a woman, not of a man. You say, well, preacher, why is that so important? I'll tell you why. Because man's blood is tainted with sin. Wherefore is by one man sin entered into this world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And if Mary had had a human, or excuse me, if Christ had had a human father, that sin blood would have been with him. But he had the Holy Ghost and the Holy Blood of the Heavenly Father flowed through him and he had no sin nature whatsoever. That's why the virgin birth is so important. Now hang on. I didn't say the Virgin Mary was important. Let me scare you. You know, ladies... If you had been alive back then, Jesus could have chosen you just like he chose Mary. And understand this. Mary gave birth to Christ. She and Joseph being married, are you ready? Had other sons and daughters. Christ wasn't the only child. So she did not have perpetual virginity. She was not always a virgin. And today she is not the Virgin Mary. Today she is, yes, known as, quote, the mother of God in, in that like fashion. But she has no saving marriage. She has no saving power. And there is nothing in her that can give you access to God better than the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? So understand, we believe that his birth, that his birth was a virgin birth. Go to the book of... Isaiah, you say, well, preacher, you just believe that. No, the Bible says it. Let me say that again. The Bible says it. And if the Bible says it, it's true. Because this is the inerrant, infallible, inspired Word of God. Holy men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, and it is given to you and I, and there is not an error in it. And if it said that Jonah swallowed the well, I would believe that. Just as much if the well, as the well swallowed Jonah. So the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 7, excuse me, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Read this out loud with me, please. 
Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which is meaning God with us. Matthew, please, chapter number 1. Matthew, chapter number 1, verse number 23. Matthew 1, 23. Behold, a virgin Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Luke chapter number 1, please. Matthew, Mark, and then Luke chapter number 1. We'll read verse 27 and verse 34. The Bible says... In actually, verse number 26. And in the sixth month, the, Gabriel, Gabriel, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee, unto Nazareth, to a virgin, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And if you go down to verse number 34, then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be? seeing I know not a man. Now, if anybody knew whether she had been with a man, it would have been Mary. Hello? And she said, how can it be? I know not a man. I've never been with anyone. You see, my friend, understand this. He that was in the beginning came to this life and was born of a virgin. And as a result of that, the book of Luke, chapter number 2, verse number 52, leads us to the, set, to the third part of his life. And I'm going to make this statement, and it doesn't matter whether, me, you, whether you agree with me or not, I know it's true, I know it's biblical, and I know it's real. Number one, there was no sin in Jesus. He did no sin. There was no evil or no guile found in him. Number two, he could not have sinned because he did not have the sin nature of Adam like you and I have. Somebody said, well, preacher, I just think he could have sinned. No, that's not the, what the Bible says. The Bible says he was tempted in, in, point, in all points such as you and I, and yet he was without sin. Amen? You see, the sinless life is just as important as the virgin birth. Hebrews chapter number 4. And I'm going to give you scripture. And like I said, I believe in backing everything up that I believe with scripture. And I'm giving it to you today. Uh, Hebrews chapter number 4, verse number 15. The Bible says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. The book of Isaiah, please, chapter number 53. Isaiah, chapter number 53. Verse number 9. The Word of God says, And he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence. And look at this. Neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Second Corinthians, please, chapter number 5. One of my favorite verses in the Word of God. Second Corinthians, chapter number 5, verse number 21. God's Word tells us, For he hath made him to be sin for us, Comma, who knew no sin. He hath made Jesus to be sin for us. And Jesus knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. First Peter chapter number 2, please. First Peter chapter number 2. We'll look at verse 19 and 20. Folks, this thing of the sinless life is so important. 
And it's so important that you back it up with Scripture because there are people in this world that get so frustrated. Heresy and false doctrines and false teachings. I was talking to a guy just last week and he said, well, I believe Jesus lived and yeah, history says he died. I believe they just made up that story about the resurrection. And even if he did rise again, he said, I read a book just last week that said Jesus had an affair with Mary and he had some children running around out there. And I looked at him and I said, no, my friend, Jesus is the Son of God. And there was no sin in him and neither could he have sinned. And he said, prove it. 1 Peter chapter number 2. I gave him those scriptures and then I turned him over here. And I said, in 1 Peter chapter number 2 verse 19. For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, for what glory is it if when ye buffeted, make sure I'm in the right, yeah, when ye buffeted, ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable unto God. Are you ready? Verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. And read verse 22 out loud with me, please. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self, bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed for you were as sheep going astray but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. Hebrews chapter number 7 I'm going to read one verse here, verse number 26. Very important verse. You can start in verse number 25. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he liveth forever to make intercession for him. Verse 26. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, and read this out loud with me, please, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens. He had no sin nature. He was separate from sinners. And because he had no sin nature, he could die for us, which brings us to the next step in his life. The substitutionary, vicarious death on Calvary. You can read it in Matthew chapter 27. We know Romans chapter 5 verse 8, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Us. We know in the book of Galatians chapter number 3 verse number 13 Christ, has, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth 
on a tree. We know that he died for you and for me. And he shed his blood on Calvary that we might be redeemed and re-ransomed. That's why he said he hath made him to be sin for us. Even though he knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He suffered. He bled. He died on Calvary. He was beaten. He was forsaken. He was rejected for me. And as the songwriter said, I should have been crucified. I should have died in his place. But Jesus, God's son, took my place. Praise God for his substitutionary death on Calvary. But it doesn't end there. For lo, in the grave he lay. And three days later, up from the grave he arose. And the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. I'm going rapidly now because I want you to get the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. This is known as the resurrection chapter. And the apostle Paul said, Now if Christ be preached that he arose from the dead, how some say among you that there is no resurrection of the dead. For if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then my, our preaching is in vain. And your faith is also vain. Yea, we are found false witnesses of God because we testified of God that He raised up Christ, whom He hath not, who He raised up not, not raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not, not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are not in. You are yet. In your sins. Then they also which fallen asleep in Christ are perished. In this life only we have hope in Christ. We are of all men most miserable. Read verse 20 please out loud. But now is Christ risen from the dead. And become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death. And by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die. Even so in Christ shall all be made what? Alive. You see my friend. He is no longer in that grave. Up from the grave he arose. And because he lives, we have hope of eternal life. And then John chapter 14 tells us to let not our hearts be troubled. We believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And he said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And then the word of God tells us in the book of Acts chapter number 1. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, this Jesus that was in the beginning, this Jesus that was in the manger, this Jesus that lived a perfect life, this Jesus that died a sacrificial death, this Jesus that rose again and ascended into heaven, this same Jesus will come again and receive us unto himself. Oh, my friend, you say, oh, that's the end. Oh no, there's one more. And it's called the coronation day. For you see, one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. One day as he began ruling and reigning in eternity, he will rule and reign forever. In eternity and forever we will get to be with him forever we will worship him forever we will sing to him forever we will praise him forever we will give him glory and as Handel's Messiah said hallelujah forever and forever and forever he shall reign because he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the glory. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the forever Lord. Oh, my friend, Christmas is more than a baby in a manger. Christmas is more than tree lights on a tree. Christmas is more than bringing gifts. 
Christmas is more than wise men gathering around. Christmas is more than singing away in a manger. Christmas is realizing who Jesus really is. The creator, the redeemer, the sustainer, and the coming king. The question is, is he Lord in your life?